It is a Wednesday, June the 9th. Welcome to Up to the Minute. I'm Todd Duplantis. Great to have you with us. We've got your HCC news and information for the next half hour. We've got a couple of great subjects we're going to talk with you about this half hour. First off, Cayo de Aragon Cruz is my co-host this morning. Cayo, good to see you. Good to see you, Todd. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm really excited to talk about today's topic. Yeah, well, we're going to get uh, into the show in just a moment. Why don't you remind people about our social media and where they can follow us? Sure. Well, we can follow tech, Facebook. We have the ATC page. And, um, and one thing, too, Instagram, I've been following ATC. There's so many good content and news and everything, and also Twitter. That's right. And you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can find us under Houston Community College District on YouTube, Facebook, as uh, Kayo mentioned, Instagram, we got a lot of great content out there. All right, Kayo, sit back. We're going to check in with you in a little while and uh, hear more from you about the uh, happenings around HCC. We got two guests this morning. Dr. Juan Crawford is the instructor with the real estate program with the Business Center of Excellence. He joins us this morning. Good to see you, Juan. We got your, I think we got your microphone muted. There yes, go. good to see you as well, Ty. All right, we're looking forward to hearing about the real estate program. Stick around, and we want to talk to you on the Houston real estate market because for some reason it's going crazy right now. We'll talk crazy. about that in a little while. All right, we're going to kick off our show with Chris Matthews. He is the finance and technology reporter with the Houston Business Journal, and we're going to be talking about esports. Good morning, Chris. How are you? Uh, good morning to you. Good morning to all our viewers this morning, and thank you so much for having me. I'm doing fine. Yeah, thanks for being here. First off, esports, what exactly is this? Is this a new gaming trend? Is it something you do online? What, what exactly is this? I wouldn't describe it as new. You know, it's, uh, you'd be surprised to know that esports has been around in, in a shape or form since, you know, the 1990s. People playing competitive video games, essentially, when you think about esports, competitive video gaming. Um, certainly has grown a lot in just the past few years, of course, with some really big titles out there. You know, you have like League of Legends, Rocket League, Counter-Strike, Global Offensive, a massive one, Fortnite, you know, some of these titles that really ring, you know, throughout the generations, people are playing them a lot. Um, so no, it's, it's a developing space. I'd say it's early stages in certain areas in Houston. I would describe it as we're, we're in an early stage when it comes to developing our esports kind of sector here. Um, growing in Texas, certainly different areas of Texas seeing different rates of growth. Yeah. Um, but some action there and definitely some opportunity for business people, opportunity for young people that love playing video games that are good at gaming. Um, so not not super new, but also not super old, I would describe it. Well, I, I consider myself old school. You know, I like the old Madden NFL the, uh, football games. And I used to uh, be a junkie on the NCAA football because I could take like the Houston Cougars back and put uh, Case Keenum behind center. And then we could just run the table. I, I enjoyed playing the games that way. Are those games still popular or is it more the new gaming? I guess it was these were before the days where we'd get online and play each other. Um, were Are those games still popular in the old school audiences or are we talking just a whole new generation of online uh, integrated gaming? Oh, absolutely. I would say the sports games are still very popular. I neglected to mention some of those like the NCAA, the Madden NFL titles, still uh, competitive gaming going on in those areas as well. Um, and certainly empathize with you. I remember playing some of those uh, some of those NCAA games. And, and I think some of them are actually going to be coming back now uh, that yeah. some developments on, on the college players getting paid a different subject to talk about. Um but yes, there's a whole slew of different titles now that people are playing online. Um, of course, during the coronavirus pandemic, when the kind of physical sports and, and you know, sports on the field of uh, field of play were turned off, you know, these online offerings and esports really saw saw a big boom there. Yeah. Um, so a lot of it's online. And now they're resuming again what you might uh, hear a local access network LAN play where people actually come together to decrease sort of Internet lag and, and yeah. some of those considerations with playing online. So some stuff happening again in person. 
uh, and, and events are, are fun, energetic. Uh, people love going to those in-person events, but a lot of it is still online. New titles are coming out. Of course, the gaming space is always about what's new, what's 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 on on the bleeding edge. So, uh, people love to play these new titles that are coming out. But but I'm with you too. NCAA, some of those classic games still getting played, still extremely popular. Yeah, I, I certainly love those games. Let me ask you this: um, Are there opportunities out there for entrepreneurs to make money more in the e? sports scene, especially in the Houston area? There are opportunities. Absolutely. Um, you know, I know of a few companies either supporting the esports space with various software offerings. Um, I, I know of a couple of, of actual companies that are in the esports space, fielding teams, you know, actually player contracts here in the Houston region. Probably the most notable I know of are the Houston Outlaws. They compete in Blizzard's Overwatch League. Um, they're actually based uh, up in the Woodlands area um, where they compete against some of the top international talent um, in Blizzard's Overwatch, uh, which is a 6v6 kind of team-based shooter game. Um, so, you know, I, actual opportunities to get a spot on the Houston Outlaws, something like that, you know, that that takes a lot of time, though. I think some of your viewers might be interested in actually uh, going into becoming an esports player uh, if they're good enough. But absolutely, there are other opportunities. There's a company called Mainline here mm -hmm. in Houston. Uh, they develop tournament software and basically run esports tournament for clients like colleges and universities, some major colleges and universities out there. Um, they ran the ESPN Collegiate Esports Championship a couple of years back, here, which took place in Houston, surprisingly. Um, uh, they've, they've managed to raise nearly $7 million in venture capital uh, in 2019 through a Series A raise. So, you know, there's opportunities, uh, certainly for fundraising, for, for different, to be able to go out there and, and develop ideas, supporting the esports space. Um, you know, you could even launch a team. There, there's all sorts of different opportunities, launching organizations. I spoke with an organization here called Enterprise Gaming um, that, you know, a lot of their operations are based in California and kind of right. international at this point. But, um, you know, different opportunities in this space, left and right. Are there more opportunities in esports in the Houston area for gaming than there would be for maybe RPG gaming and other types of gaming? Are there more of those opportunities here locally? Um, in terms of joining an esports team, I think you'd be a little hard pressed, honestly. I think there's, you know, but it kind of depends. If you're talking about students, uh, colleges and universities here are leaning in. So if you're a student on a college campus, like the University of St. Thomas, uh, I've spoken with, they're, they're building out a campus esports center there where wow. people can, can come. You know, it's, it's just a new offering to be able to bring to students as well, um, you know, hanging out on campus, going to the esports center to see what's going on, possibly renting some time there, playing with your friends, um, just having a good time. Uh, beyond that, they're actually fielding, you know, competitive teams. They're offering scholarship money to students that are coming um, to join their teams. Um, you know, in various titles. I know the University of Houston, I, I was checking out, seems to be organizing some some various esports teams. I'm not sure what you uh, what HCC is up to on the esports space, but uh, would love to hear about any, any offerings going on there too for students. So, you know, there's, if you're a student, there's some opportunities at, at one of the local universities. Um, if you're, if you're like me, I'm 27 years old, you know, if, if you're out there looking to make a, a job out of playing on a pro esports team, it might be a little hard pressed. There's, yeah. they're extremely competitive. You know, I mentioned the Houston outlaws, they held global tryouts. Uh, you know, some wow. of the players that are living up in the Woodlands area are among the top talent in, in Blizzard's Overwatch on the entire planet. Um, so, you know, if you're that good, the, the outlaws might be interested in having you, but, but, you know, there's a lot of development that needs to happen there. Um, you know, another route might be forming your own organization and getting players together that way. If you're joining a team like the, uh, the Houston outlaws, you keep mentioning them. Um, uh, do they, do you get money through sponsorships? Do you win tournament money? How, how do they, uh, how do they make their money for those teams? So much of the money comes from sponsorships and, and sort of deals that way. Uh, some of the winnings come from actual tournament earnings. So I think that's, that's just declined a lot, you know, as sort of a, a source of revenue and where a big chunk of that, that money comes from. Um, you know, I, I was reading that I believe I'd have to check exactly again in my reporting, but, but 
the Overwatch League players made, uh, I think, a median salary of over fifty thousand dollars last wow. year. Just for playing a game that they love, right? Just for playing a video game um, and, and being extremely devoted to this. I mean, yeah. w- when you look at their schedules, they spend all day essentially practicing and, and playing, evaluating their play, and and with coaches talking about their gameplay. Um, so you know, and, and as I mentioned, they're some of the best, some of the best talent in the entire world. So they're paid accordingly uh, by the league. So you know, it, it's not chump change. It's not, you know, it's it's good money for people. And, and some of them are paid upwards of six figures. Uh, so, you know, a lot of it comes from actual league contract salaries. A lot of it comes from sponsorship and other deals that go on with the teams. Um, so different sources of revenue. Absolutely. Um, you uh, maintain there was a recent $210 million deal that is pointing to how much this industry is growing. Uh, real briefly, you want to tell us about that? Absolutely. Yes. So that was very recent. Uh, I think just last week that TSM, an organization uh, based in California, to my understanding, uh, announced a $210 million 10, over 10 years for naming rights from a cryptocurrency exchange called FTX. Um, I've read, you know, the largest esports deal out there in the sector so far. You know, it's a lot of money. Obviously, it's going to be changing all of the team names from TSM to TSM FTX, uh, which is causing, you know, a little disruption in some of their leagues that they play in. But that's a different story. But, you know, just pointing to to the size of some of the deals that go on in this league, the exposure that some of these brands have. TSM is definitely one of the most notable of the esports organizations out there. Um, and you know, in California, there's a lot of other organizations that are, that are big and and growing even quicker than what we're seeing in Houston. Um, so, you know, just from a sort of deal-making perspective and and the size of this industry, there's a lot of growth happening, uh, even just right now in the past week or so. Amazing. Chris Matthews, the finance and technology reporter at the Houston Business Journal, our gaming guest. Thanks for being here this morning and, uh, really opening our eyes on an industry that uh, is growing by leaps and bounds. Absolutely, Todd. Thanks so much for having me. Appreciate the time. Thank you, Chris. All right, we're going to move on to Dr. Juan Crawford. You know, we keep hearing the uh, real estate industry in the Houston area. The market is going phenomenal. Um, Juan, welcome back to the show. We've talked before. What's going on out there? I mean, from what I'm hearing, if you want to buy a house, you want to put in an offer for it, you need to kick up that offer. We're talking at not just a few thousand dollars, maybe ten or twenty thousand dollars more, just to get the seller to look at you. Is that what's going on out there? That that's what's going on, Todd. Uh right now, the Houston real estate market, you know, Houston is the fourth largest city in North America. And you know, I've talked I talked a little bit about it being the most diverse city in probably in the country maybe even the world, you know, there are obviously cities bigger than us, but I don't think there would be more diverse than us. I don't think Moscow or Mexico City or London are, are bigger than we are. But, uh, you know, that, that everything that's going on in the Houston market right now, that it, it is a huge seller's market, not a buyer's market. That means you put a house on the market and you're going to get, uh, you know, 10 to 15 offers the very first day, the very second day, yeah. the very first week. Because there are so many out there. And so that if I have, if, if you are a buyer and you are trying to compete with other buyers out there, then you need to make your offer the most attractive offer. And that is sometimes offering more, asking for less, closing quicker, less hassles with the seller. You want to do everything that you can to, to be able to do that. You know, what's really confusing to some of us who look at the market, I look back in the 80s when we had the oil bust, you know, in the in the early to mid 80s. And houses here, you know, you couldn't give them away at times because we had so many uh, issues financially. We're just coming out of a pandemic. There are people who have lost their jobs, uh, had their income cut substantially, yet our market for homes is just skyrocketing. What's going on out there with this? Why, why is that? And what are the factors playing into this? Well, I, I don't have an answer. I don't have an answer as to why. I, you know, I, I know that you know from the real estate companies are saying that their best year was 2020. Wow. What do you mean your best year? That was the year of the pandemic. That was our best year. There were more houses sold in the pandemic in the pandemic year uh, for cash 
that, that allowed right now for, for to be a realtor, to be a real estate broker, to be a real estate salesperson, you are right now at the cusp of all of those real estate transactions. That uh, I did a uh, an interview the other day, and I said that fiduciary obligations. That means you shouldn't come to the table without a realtor. You should not. Uh, if you're a buyer, you need a realtor. If you are a seller, you need a realtor. All of the the fact that you need all of those. This is a, a phenomenal time to get into the real estate industry. Is it still, you and I have always talked about income generating properties and investors buying these homes. With homes going for such a high price, sooner or later, you got to figure you're going to get to that point where you're buying high and you're going to wind up selling low one day. Um, are, what's your advice if you still want to get into these income generating properties? Are there foreclosures out there? Are there properties that will generate an income with this high market out there? I, I think that there are. There are not, but but now when you say foreclosures, two years ago there were forty eight hundred foreclosures within the market every thirty days, every thirty days, and so people, you know, those are foreclosures. They couldn't make their payment. Da, 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 da. They're hitting the market every thirty days. Today there's probably about fifty. What do you mean fifty? The other, the other 4,750 properties didn't hit the market. What do you mean it didn't hit the market? They're being sold to investors yeah. in groups of 100 houses at a time, 500 houses at a time, 1,000 houses at a time. Really, they are being sold because investors that are bigger than us are looking for income generating properties, something that is going to continue to generate income. When you look at uh, a rental, the rental market in the Houston area, and you went to HAR and you said, I want to rent on, and I want to pay $2,500 a month. That's $30,000 a year that I'm going to just give out for rent. You would think maybe there's 500 houses higher, 1,000 houses higher, 1,500 houses higher. There are 2,000 properties on the market today. 2,000 properties on the market for rent above $2,500 a month. Between $1,250 a month and $2,500, that window between $1,250 and $2,500, there's 7,800 properties out there. Wow. In Houston, we move 10,000 units every 90 days. Well, how did they get 10,000 units every 90 days? Are that many people renting their house out? No, it's because they were sold in groups of 100 houses at a time. All of these people are, all of these companies are now trying to rent out because they needed income yeah. support. Something that's going to continue to produce income. Wow. Uh, now, uh, so obviously, if you want to get into real estate, folks, now's the time to do so. In HCC, we've got the programs for them. And I know you've got a number of certificates, degrees that people can get. Maybe you can kind of break those down for us, Juan. Okay. To not be redundant, the, the three things you can do at HCC, you can take the six classes needed to get your real estate license. Principles one, principles, principles of real estate one, principles of real estate two, law of agency, law of contracts, contract forms of addendum, real estate finance. Or you can take the six classes to get your real estate built to your license, plus co-op to get a real estate certificate where it teaches you how to make money doing this. Or you can take the six classes to get your, your real estate license plus 14 others to actually get an associate's degree in real estate. And what the associate's degree in real estate does is it tells all of your potential buyers and sellers that you are at the top of your craft. Right. You are you you are at the top of your craft and you have achieved a, an associate's degree more so than anybody else that's out there that doesn't have one. And you know more about what's going on in the market. Are you finding um, or are you encouraging people to pick up real estate as a part time job? I have a number of friends that say, you know, well, I do this during the day, but I also um, dabble in real estate a bit and I sell real estate on the side for, for you to be successful in something like this. Can you successfully do it part time or do you have to go all in? You mentioned the associate's degree, which is a pretty big commitment, but it sounds like that's when you're all in and that's when you're going to be at top of your game. What do you suggest to people? That, that you don't have to come in all in, right? But but you can come in and work to be all in. Right. Come in and and, and do it. I'm, I'm going to do it part time. I'm going to do it part time. But I'm going to set some goals to say, this is the type of income we need generated. And when we can get these more consistent in this income, then I'm going to be able to pull away from the, 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 the full-time job. It's, it's providing me the ability to feed my family, providing me the ability to 
you know, pay our mortgage, providing the ability to have a car note. So those things will be there. But at some point, you will then let them go and you will then do real estate full time. Are we going to reach a time, and this may be a theoretical question, are we going to reach a time where this plateau is going to say that's it and the market's going to start going down? My worry would be right now buying a house, paying 10, 20, maybe even 30,000 or more for that house. And I bought it at an all time high. How am I going to make money and say I want to sell it in the next five to 10 years? The, the, and, and then I don't, I don't believe, yes, I believe that time will come where you will, you know, that, that we will be at the top of that. But I don't think that that's coming anytime soon. Wow. I don't think that that is coming anytime soon. And so the, 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 the opposite of that, the opposite of what you said is I'm going to keep renting. Yeah. I'm yeah. going to keep paying somebody else's house note. I'm going to keep no, not, not having the ability to build equity. No, you don't want to keep doing that. You don't want you know, the, the opposite of I'm going to to jump into this housing market is I'm going to rent. I mean, you got to stay someplace. But what I would say is that right now you you jump into the housing market, you buy a house. If you have the ability to buy a house now, buy it because chances are not chances are tomorrow you, you close on it today. Tomorrow is it's going to be worth more money. <laughs> In HCAD, who does your taxes, who does our, our Houston, uh, the county appraisal, that they are going up by nine point, uh, that would say like 9.1 a year, a yeah. year. That, that, that if those things are happening and you look at the house that you bought today for 150, now the other thing too, and, and, and I know we have, we don't have a lot of time, but when, when, when I got into the real estate industry, the, the 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, a hundred thousand dollar house is gone. Yeah. It's, it's gone. It's gone. It's gone. And so then now what you need to look at is said, okay, if I, the, 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 the least expensive house in Cyprus is 130, the least expensive house in Houston might be, you know, 110, the least expensive house in spring is 115, the least expensive house in Katy, all of these areas, those, the, the, the least expensive are out there. So that you want to hop in that as fast as you can for as, as little money as you can. And so then if you are, if you look at a $150,000 house, $150,000 house on a FHA loan was requiring 3.5% down, that note is going to be somewhere around $1,250 a month. If you're currently paying $1,250 a month to rent and you could pay $1,250 a month to own, why would you not own? I don't yeah. care what the market is going to do. But at some, I'm building equity. And at some point in time, I can sell my house. And if I, if I get a year from now, I can sell it for $160,000 because there's a $10,000 difference. But I got to write off all of the interest that I've been paying for this last year. Yeah, right. when, you are, when you rent a house, you don't get to write that off at all. Juan Crawford, Dr. Juan Crawford is an instructor with the HCC Real Estate Program. One thing for sure, whether the market's up or the market's down, people need real estate agents to buy and sell their homes. Juan mm -hmm. can get you taught on the courses. Juan, thanks for being here. Yes, my pleasure. All right, take care of yourself. All right. Okay, we're going to move on to Kayo, who is our co-host this morning. Kayo, good to see you. Um, we've got a couple of things going on. First up, Good Vibrations Summer Audio Workshops. Tell us what that, uh, that's all about. So this is actually really cool and I'm really interested. So you're going to learn to make music in 20 hours with ATC Professor David Charmer. Emily is a certified trainer for nearly 20 years. The workshop includes music tier, creating beats, sampling, and remixing. It's going to be 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Saturdays in June, June 12, 19, and 26. If you want to reach out to him, the contact is uh, david.charmer at atcs.edu. We also have the registration link on your post after the show. So, guys, this is really cool. I really like the fact that you can learn how to, you know, create some music. So, um, the next one, we got the MEBDA Virtual Subs and Sandwich uh, with ATC Procurement Small Business Development. ATC Minority Business Development Association is still getting together to uh, target minority business enterprise. But bring your own subs, it's virtual. Wednesday, June 16th, from 11.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. Check the ATC events calendar to, re to register. All right, and next up, we've got the Gallery Without Walls. Now, Kyle, you know, since um, 
uh, we've been doing this COVID thing. Everybody's been working remotely. Uh, classes are just resuming. But for everybody's safety purpose over the last, what, 14 months, we've had to have our gallery showings online. And this is happening uh, since the art galleries are still closed right now. Student artists from all of HCC colleges are showing their spring semester work on Instagram. Again, you can check them out. Uh, it's a non-juried exhibition. They're on Instagram at, at HCC underscore visual underscore arts. We'll have that information in the social media post for the show. And archaeology, well, you'll really dig this next one. Register now for Intro to Archaeology. Become a uh, Indiana Jones, if you will. Uh, fall classes now will begin, will be held on Tuesdays and Thursdays, but they still want you to sign up. HCCS.edu slash now. Speaking of Indiana Jones, the new movie is being filmed right now. Harrison Ford, he's like 150 but he's put on the uh, original India, Indiana Jones costumes and he's wearing the hat. He's got the whip and uh, he's going to go all out. So we're looking forward to that anyway. OK, I digress. Uh, earn your degree for free. Tell us what that's about, Caio. So if your federal state grants and scholarship don't cover all you need for an el 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 sorry, eligible ATC degree or certificate, Eagle Promise Dollars will. Don't wait, apply today. That's really cool. If you need you know, some money to pay for tuition, that's a, a good solution for it. So go to atc.edu, free degree. And Path to Professional, it's like the traditional work study program. Uh, this provides students the opportunity to earn money and gain real world experience in their field. Uh, it's a very long link. We're gonna have that in the social media post for the show. Kyle, are you returning to campuses to take classes anytime soon? I'm definitely coming for the fall, not for the summer. I need a little vacation to calm down, and then I'll be back on the fall. So in the fall, though, you'll be going to campus. Have you? Are you excited about returning to the campuses? I mean, when you're one of our current students. Uh, what's your take on getting back in the classroom? Uh, I'm really excited to come back because, you know, one of the classes that I need to take is photography. So it's really hard to learn that through, you know, the camera, through Zoom. So once we're there, we have models, we have objects, we can see how the professor move, how the professor talks to them. So I think for this type of classes, it's essential to be on campus. So I'm really excited for that. Well, we are having on-campus uh, in-person classes. They're starting this summer. In fact, they're now underway on our HCC campuses. In the fall, we'll be opening up more classes uh, where you can take them in person. But we have five ways to learn. Two of them are strictly online. Two of them are hybrid, which is a mixture of online and in-person instruction. And then we have the traditional in-person classes. You can register for all of them at hccs.edu slash now. Go there, sign up early, make sure you get all your paperwork done early because uh, a lot of these classes are gonna be smaller, especially the ones in person. So you wanna get the, the instructor you want, the time you want, the class you want, make sure you do it and register early. All right, tomorrow on our show, we've got Martin Garcia of our truck driving school. He'll talk about the program's return to campuses and how it's been operating uh, with some help of some simulators. And also, Kayo, it's Thursday Virtual Family Fun Day tomorrow. Yeah, it's going to be with a special guest, the Children's Museum, which has officially reopened. We have not a one, but two office educators here to tell us about today, just this week. That's right. So tomorrow, Thursday, Virtual Family Fun Day. We've also got the truck driving school and a few more surprises as well. I believe Brittany is joining us tomorrow if she's not too busy. So we'll see if that happens. Hey, Kyle, thanks for being here. And you can also catch Kyle on the Student Lounge. You got a new episode coming up? Yeah, we have a lot of new episodes. We have one about the art car uh, show that we recorded last week. Yeah. And we also going to be talking to the backstage uh, OL people, which is a really cool partnership with ATC. Yeah. I'm not going to give any spoilers, but you guys should definitely check that one out. Yeah, yeah, that's going to be cool. And I think you're a guest on the show next week. Yes, I am. I yeah, am. The guest. I won an award recently, so we're going to hear about that. Congratulations. We'll talk more about that next week. All right, Kayo, we'll see you next week. We'll see all of you tomorrow live right here at 10 a.m. on Up to the Minute.